Any genuine person who is genuinely looking for a relationship should be happy to have a video call with you, should be happy to send more photographs. Hello and welcome to the Cost of Living newscast from Kent County Council. In this episode, our journalist Elizabeth Matsangu is speaking to Sophie Day, Fraud Prevention Coordinator for Kent Police, about romance scams, how to stay safe and the measures in place to protect individuals. For more advice and tips, click the subscribe button below, follow Kent County Council's public protection or business advice accounts on social media, or sign up to receive scam alerts or business bulletins by email. Links below. So Sophie, how do romance scams target people? There's no real set way to how romance fraudsters target specific people. But what we do find is that they tend to set up multiple different profiles on a range of different platforms. So that can include dating websites, social media, and really anything where they can interact with people. They send out multiple messages to lots of different people all at the same time. And they just wait to see whoever replies first. They look at the person's profile and they pick out things that they can kind of um, start to have in common with them. So for example, if on the victim's profile, they've said that they're recently divorced and have two children, the fraudster may then say that they're also recently divorced with children and often they'd be of the same age. And then as the conversation continues, uh, the fraudster will start to mirror things that they're learning about the victim. It's really important to remember that they are criminals and this is their business. So they know exactly really the tactics to use when they're speaking to people. They understand psychology of language, psychology of behaviour, such as the mirroring of things in order to make themselves appear genuine. Um, and it can absolutely happen to anyone. So how can someone know if a romance is genuine or not? There's quite a few things that you can look out for when speaking to people online to determine whether they are genuine. Once they've started the conversation going with someone, they're very quick to want to move off of that initial platform onto a different service such as WhatsApp, email, text messages, anything like that. Because a lot of dating platforms, they have protections in place to remove and block um, fraudulent profiles. So as soon as the fraudsters moved their victim onto WhatsApp, they can continue the conversation freely, even after their profile shut down. Secondly, the uh, fraudsters often try to purport to be someone of sort of like high authority or in a really good job or in the military. A lot of the time they say that so they can get away with saying that they're working overseas. And that's another thing that's a very common theme. They say that they're from the UK a lot of the time, but they're working overseas currently because of their job. They may only have a certain number of photographs and they may seem to be highly staged photographs. Um, again, a lot of the time because they're pretending to be someone else, they will have obtained those images off the Internet. They avoid telephone contact and video chats as well. Naturally, if they're not who they say they are in the photographs, they're not going to want to go on camera to you. Um, and finally, they will ask for financial help in some sort of way. Um, majority of the time, they will tell some sort of sob story to pull at the heartstrings. So it could be that um, they've been injured at work and they need help financially for medical bills. A family member's been taken ill and um, it could be that they've lost their passport and they want to come and see the victim so badly. Can they uh, pay for a new one, pay for flights and um, anything like that. Um, and more recently, we're starting to see requests for gift cards. So they may ask their victim to go to the shop, purchase gift cards such as Google Play or Amazon vouchers and send the codes to them so they can use them. And cryptocurrencies as, as well is becoming more popular and um, I'd say they're some of the red flags to look out for. Aside from those red flags that you mentioned what tips do you have for people to stay safe? We would strongly recommend if you do start speaking to someone online stick to the platform when you first start speaking to them and keep communication on there until you've 
actually met the person in real life and can confirm they are who they say they are. Um, always ask for more photographs and um, ask for video calls as well. Any genuine person who is genuinely looking for a relationship should be happy to have a video call with you, should be happy to send more photographs. And I would always recommend as well asking more specific photographs. So for, for example, if they say that they have a dog, ask for a photo of them with their dog with a newspaper with today's date on, things like that, that a genuine person can go out and take that photograph. Same with the videos as well, because fraudsters, they are getting increasingly clever with the technology that they can use. And there have been times where they are able to start spoofing video calls as well. Really importantly as well, if you are ever to speak into someone online or starting a new relationship online, please keep it open with a trusted friend or family member. If they're looking from the outside in, they should hopefully be able to spot things that you may not necessarily see. Um, and most importantly, if you do ever get a request for money from anyone online and any form of money, or even if they ask if they can send you money um, for you to look after, to keep or to pass on to someone, don't do it. Don't send money. Don't accept any money from anyone you do not physically know in the real world. We can't take action without your reports. We need everyone who comes across them to speak up and report scams and criminals. Even if you've seen a scam many times before, your reporting can help us target our resources and warn and protect others. If you have information on doorstep criminals, counterfeit fake or illegal goods, illicit tobacco, loan sharks, or underage sales. Contact the charity Crime Stoppers on 0800 555 111. You'll stay 100% anonymous, always. To report scams and get advice on consumer issues, call the Citizens Advice Consumer Helpline on 0808 223 1133. Thank you for helping us protect Kent from scammers and criminals.